Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland's Defence Senior Advisor to the Middle East and North Africa, Air Marshal Martin Sampton at Rifa Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the long-standing relations between Bahrain and the UK which have resulted in various strategic military and defence participations. His Royal Highness emphasised Bahrain's commitment to strengthening bilateral cooperation to achieve common goals benefiting both kingdoms and their peoples. The latest regional and international developments and issues of common interest were also discussed. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Minister of Finance and National Economy Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Bahrain Defense Forces Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagr al Naimi also attended the meeting. The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa received at Qaybiya Palace in the presence of the Speaker of the Council of Representatives Ahmed Lim Salam and Shura Council Chairman Ali Al Saleh, the heads of delegations to the meetings of the Standing Committee on Economic and Sustainable Development at the Asian Parliamentary Assembly APA, hosted by Bahrain. The Deputy Premier affirmed Bahrain's keenness, led by His Majesty the King and supported by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to support regional and global initiatives to establish international peace and security, reinforce peaceful dialogue, openness and communication among people's representatives. He added that His Majesty the King's democratic and civilized approach is based on justice, equality, respect for human rights and serving development goals. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah conveyed the greetings of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to the heads of the delegations as well as his best wishes for success. He praised the role that the legislative branch plays under His Majesty the King's comprehensive reform project, praising the legislature's success in establishing strong relations with councils and the parliamentary organizations both regionally and internationally. The Deputy Premier noted the importance of the topics on the agenda of the meeting of APA Standing Committee on Economic and Sustainable Development as they represent priorities in both the Government Action Plan and the work of the Legislature. He congratulated the Council of Representatives member and APA Vice President Ahmed Saloum on his re-election as the Chairman of APA Standing Committee on Economic and Sustainable Development, wishing him continued success. Shura Council Chairman and Council of Representatives Speaker praised the unwavering support of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for the legislative branch expressing pride in the Kingdom's landmark democratic and parliamentary achievements under the comprehensive development process. They expressed gratitude to the Deputy Premier for the government's keenness to enhance executive legislature cooperation in all fields to optimize the gains of the nation and the citizens. They affirmed that Bahrain's hosting of the meeting of APA Standing Committee on Economic and Sustainable Development reflects its distinguished capabilities, which entitles it to be a prestigious center for regional and global conferences, meetings and events. The Council of Representatives held its weekly session chaired by its Speaker Ahmed Limsalem. The Council approved a proposal on exempting those who are eligible for government support for electricity and water bills for the month of June, July and August. The Council also approved a proposal not allowing foreigners to change the type of entry visa while in Bahrain. Council of Representatives Speaker Ahmed Lim Salem hailed the order of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa directing the concerned government authorities to immediately accept 236 eligible retirement pension applications in the Khutwa Home Project program provided the government pays the additional contributions to ensure the pension fund is not affected. 
The speaker commended the government's commitment to reinforcing constructive cooperation with the Council of Representatives in light of the comprehensive development led by His Majesty the King. He noted that the order comes within His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's efforts to meet citizens' needs and help them overcome all challenges to ensure decent living conditions in line with the royal aspirations. The Speaker commended His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's directives to set up government committee to review 69 employee cases in the Khatwa program for home projects and verify that they meet the criteria for a retirement pension. He stressed the importance of the move, which contributes to protecting public money and safeguarding all pensioners' rights, noting that the committee has been given one month to complete its work. Shura Council Chairman Ali Saleh paid tribute to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, lauding his order directing concerned government authority to immediately accept 236 eligible retirement pension applications in the Khatwa Home Projects Program, provided the government pays the additional contributions to ensure the pension fund isn't affected. He valued His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's directive to set up a government committee to review 69 employee cases in the Khitwa program for home projects and to verify that they meet the criteria for a retirement pension. He noted that the government's efforts comply with the directives of His Majesty the King to give full priority to citizens who represent the private and the main pillar for development. He praised the government's commitment led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to support citizens and harness all government services and procedures in a way that achieves a family's stability and decent living conditions. The Shura Council Chairman commended His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's running of the government's work and follow-up of all citizen-related issues and rights. In a statement, he reiterated legislative support to the steps undertaken by the government, which contributes to achieving social stability. On the occasion of the International Day of Living Together in Peace, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Zayani, paid tribute to His Majesty the King, hailing his wise drive to reinforce interfaith and intercultural coexistence and advocating diplomatic and civilized dialogue to diffuse regional and international conflicts. The minister stated that such a pathway is the only option to build a world where security, peace, stability, progress and sustainable development prevail. The minister expressed pride in the lofty royal initiatives and the approach of the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in promoting the culture of peace, instilling the values of tolerance and renouncing violence and incitement to religious hatred which were embodied in the Declaration of the Kingdom of Bahrain and the efforts of the King Hamid Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence and other initiatives in the field. As Zayani reiterated the commitment of the ministry, Bahrain's diplomatic and consular missions to the royal pro vision, the government's program, and the national human rights plan, stressing adherence to national pillars in Bahrain. The Minister of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture, Wa'il Limbarak, inaugurated the sixth edition of Bahrain Smart City Summit 2023. The event witnessed the participation of government and private agencies in Bahrain and international expert companies in the field of technology, sustainability and smart cities. The minister affirmed that the summit reinforces Bahrain's commitment to innovation and digital transformation in the urban sector, highlighting the opportunities available to enhance interaction and cooperation between the public and private sectors and to, private, to provide an environment for learning and effective exchange of knowledge in the field of smart cities. Limbarek trusts that the summit will benefit the kingdom as global expertise can be combined with leading local experiences in the field, which will positively reflect on the urban development process in the country. The minister confirmed that the aim of using AI is to facilitate the cycle of procedures necessary to complete the various transactions related to the business and services of the ministry in a manner that saves time and effort for service recipients and service providers. <coughs> Her
Housing and Urban Planning Minister Amna bint Ahmed al ramihi attended a panel discussion hosted by the Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning with a number of real estate companies in the kingdom. During the session, al ramihi stressed the ministry's support for all policies and initiatives aimed at increasing the supply of residential real estate that matches the value of housing finances provided to their citizens, whether through the Government Land Development Funds Program or the Distinguished Partnership with Real Estate Development companies and real estate brokers in the kingdom. The minister reviewed the positive results yielded by the housing finance scheme in short a period of time, highlighting its ability to meet a large number of citizens' housing demands. She unveiled that the scheme has contributed to the growth of real estate trading rates reaching 14.5% during the first quarter of this year, as housing finance provided the purchasing power to a large segment of citizens, stressing the importance of maintaining such an accomplishment by increasing the supply of real estate that is suitable for the beneficiaries of housing finance. The CEO of the National Health Regulatory Authority, Dr. Mariam El Jalahma, witnessed Al Maliki Specialist Hospital's launch of the International Cooperation Program with a number of internationally known experts in the field of orthopedic surgery from Oxford University Hospital in the United Kingdom. The cooperation aims to develop the medical services provided in the region and to provide international treatment in Bahrain as this service will allow patients to obtain the appropriate diagnosis without incurring the inconvenience of traveling. Exciting to come here to Bahrain in the Al Maliki Hospital. I, we would be collaborating with the orthopedic unit here to provide yeah, our level of, of, of care in orthopedics both routine cases but also maybe some more complex cases that we see very regularly in our practice. We have a strong research center in our hospital where almost every procedure that we do has a strong research basis with a lot of literature and a lot of sort of uh, you know, projects to you know, support what we do. What we are, would hope to do is to sort of bring the same sort of yeah, level of care that we do to our patients and bring them to the Bahraini population. So we've got quite a lot of technology that we're using regularly in our hospitals that we think we can d bring to Bahrain to yeah, develop sort of 21st century orthopedics in Bahrain. The unique things that we feel that we can offer, we can offer, we already have a very established practice supporting colleagues around the region and the country within the UK and we can bring that experience of managing more complicated patients but also we've got established practices dealing with what we would view as straightforward common conditions on a local basis to serve our local population and we've developed evidence-based practice systems and pathways to deliver care in a very efficient and effective way. The Civil Aviation Affairs announced the resumption of flights between Bahrain and Qatar as of May 25th in accordance with what was agreed upon between the concerned authorities and the two brotherly countries. The resumption of the flights between Bahrain and Qatar comes within the framework of the brotherly relations between the two brotherly countries and people and in a manner that achieves the common aspirations of the leaderships and citizens of both countries. Bahrain ranked first in the Middle East and North Africa in terms of financial, commercial and investment freedom for the second year in a row, according to the Index of Economic Freedom 2023 issued by the Heritage Foundation. The report indicated that Bahrain enjoys a general framework for investment supported by a competitive and effective regulatory environment characterized by transparency with fair treatment of investments, while the kingdom's financial system is characterized by its vitality and openness to enter international trade. In this context, the Chief of Strategy at the Economic Development Board, Nanda Al Saeed, affirmed that Bahrain's advanced classification is a reflection of the government's success in maintaining a developed legislative system that provides opportunities with rewarding returns for investors and it's supported by competitive advantages.
The President of Azerbaijan, Ahlam Aliyev, received the Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adil al Asumi, to participate in the special session of the National Assembly dedicated to the celebration of the 100th birthday of the founder of the modern state in Azerbaijan, Haider Aliyev. President Aliyev hailed the development of relations between his country and Bahrain, in particular, and the Arab countries in general. President Aliyev affirmed that the Bahraini-Azerbaijani relations are witnessing further development and prosperity as a result of the support of His Majesty the King and that his country is keen on continuing to strengthen these relations at all levels. He expressed appreciation for the role played by His Majesty in promoting peaceful coexistence which made Bahrain at the forefront of countries at the regional and international levels in this field. For his part, al Asumi affirmed the parliament's appreciation for the role played by the late leader Haider Aliyev in establishing strong relations between Azerbaijan and Arab and Islamic countries.